Lord, His Excellency, Mr. Muhammad Ishaq Daru, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Thank you, uh, Excellency. Honorable Chairman of SEO Council of Foreign Ministers, Mr. Murad Nurat Liu, Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Kazakhstan, Excellencies, Foreign Ministers of SEO Member States, Secretary General SEO, Director Executive Committee SEO Reds, Distinguished Colleagues, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and very good afternoon. At the outset, let me convey our heartfelt condolences on the very sad demise of Irani leader and president Ibrahim Raisai and our very dear brother, Foreign Minister Hussain Amir Abdullah and other high-ranking officials of Iran. <coughs> Pakistan stands in solidarity with the Iranian nation in this hour of grief. Our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Iran and the families of martyred President Raisi and Foreign Minister Hussain were esteemed leaders and statesmen whose contributions to their country, reinforcing Pakistan-Iran relations and regional cooperation will always be remembered. We have great and fond mem memory of their recent visit to Pakistan just last month. May Allah Almighty rest the departed souls in the eternal peace in heaven and give the patience to bear this loss to the bereaved families. Mr. Chairman, I am honored today to represent Pakistan in this important meeting of the SCO Council of Foreign Ministers. This meeting is taking place in the beautiful city of Astana, which makes this task even more pleasurable. SCO is an important regional forum members of which not only share common aspirations for peace, security, and development, but are also bound together by shared values, cultural, historical, and civilizational ties. For us, SCO is an organic and natural association of countries. Hence, cooperation with SCO countries is a high priority for Pakistan. Pakistan joins SCO countries in reiterating the centrality of the Shanghai spirit and the indispensability of the core principles and standards of international law in conducting international relations. Only through pursuit of these laudable values, we can achieve the objectives of shared development, lasting peace, and prosperity for our peoples. Excellencies, dear colleagues, Competition between the old and emerging powers is reshaping the contours of the contemporary international relations, leading to new military and political blocks. Tensions between these global powers is also favoring geopolitics at the cost of geoeconomics. We believe that this is an unhealthy competition at the cost of neglecting the greater challenges confronting the mankind. Excellencies, such cooperation can only be achieved through a more reprehensive, democratic, just, and multipolar world order firmly grounded in multilateralism. To this end, we welcome the SEO initiative on world unity for just peace and harmony, as well as global development and global security initiatives, which strive to create a just political and economic international order to promote a shared future for mankind. Excellencies, SCO's increasing influence and relevance is confirmed by its growing appeal among countries who wish to join as members, observers, or dialogue partners. In this context, I congratulate Belarus, set to become the newest member of the SCO family in the upcoming summit in July this year. Given need for strengthening the SCO structures as per the needs of the time and to aptly address the contemporary challenges Pakistan fully supports and will remain constructively engaged with the ongoing reform process. The reform process must enhance 
the monitoring and implementation capacities of SCO to track progress in the security and economic fields. It must also include English as a third official language and working language and strengthen the capacity and the role of the Secretariat to enhance the efficiency of our organization. Excellencies, both the UN and the SCO charters aptly call for peaceful settlement of the outstanding disputes. Unilateral and illegal measures to change the status of disputed territories in violation of UN Security Council resolutions must be strongly condemned and opposed by all. Palestine is an apt illustration. Over 35,000 Palestinian civilians, mostly women and children, have been killed, and over 2 million have been displaced by Israel's indiscriminate bombing in Gaza. SCO must outrightly denounce this barbaric act and call for an immediate and unconditional ceasefire before the flames of this conflict engulf other regions. Mr. Chairman, the only viable remedy to this dispute is the realization of the two-state solution, which includes the establishment of Palestine as a viable, secure, and contiguous state on the basis of pre-1967 borders with Al-Quds Al-Sharif as its capital. We must also oppose divisive politics based on prejudice and discrimination, incitement to hatred and discrimination based on race and religion, in particular the surge in the Islamophobia run counter to humanity and are universally outlawed. It is our collective duty to fight against fascism and historical revisionism that are leading to violent ultra-nationalism as well as to ensure that fundamental human rights and freedoms are guaranteed to all. Excellencies, terrorism is common concern of humanity that threatens the global security. All forms of terrorism, including state terrorism, must be squarely condemned. The need of the hour is to shun self-serving interest to use the mantra of terrorism for political gain and to combat this menace through a collective and cooperative approach, including addressing its root causes. Excellencies, we would remain constructively engaged with the various proposals to strengthen SCO regional anti-terrorism structure known as RADS to address the growing threats to peace and security in our region. Achieving lasting peace and stability in Afghanistan is a linchpin to this common objective. While we call on the international community to meaningfully engage with the interim Afghan government to help them meet their genuine economic and development needs and to address the humanitarian situation in the country, we also urge the interim Afghan government to take concrete and effective measures to ensure that its soil is not used for terrorism against any country, to adhere to the universally accepted principles of political inclusivity and respect for the rights of all Afghans, including women and girls. And we may also revise the SCO Afghanistan contact group to provide a platform for practical cooperation, this revival, I think, is need, is need of the hour. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, SCO is a vital platform for forging closer synergy with regional partners and realizing the benefits of the emerging confluence between the Belt and Road Initiative and Euro-Asian Economic Union. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor the flagship project of BRI not only supplements SCO's vision of regional connectivity and economic integration, but also complements our common objective of regional peace and prosperity. Mr. Chairman, we need to expand on such initiatives in the SCO region to create new avenues for trade and development. Similarly, we must also promote the use of national currencies for mutual settlement within SCO region 
that would help member countries to avoid international financial shocks. Pakistan also supports proposal to create an SEO alternative development funding mechanism to give needed impetus to various stalled development initiatives. Despite progress on many fronts, poverty remains one of the most serious challenges for SEO countries. With an overwhelming majority of poor people within our borders, we are duty bound to synergize our efforts to alleviate poverty from the SEO region. As the permanent chair of SEO Special Working Group to Combat Poverty, Pakistan will do its utmost to provide the required impetus to our collective efforts in raising the living standards of the people of SEO. We have already conducted its inaugural session and would soon you know, announce its second session in coordination with the member states. We must also collectively address the existential threat of climate change, which is directly contributing to increased frequency of humanitarian emergencies across the globe. Failure to commit ourselves seriously will endanger the future of our planet. Pakistan just had in 2022 uh, almost $34 billion uh, of losses. We, our emissions are less than 1%, and we are the most, one of the most seven vulnerable countries due to climate, global climate change. As agreed, excellencies, develop, developed countries must fulfill their commitments to provide adequate finances, technology, and capacity building assistance in accordance with the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities. Mr. Chairman, last October, Pakistan assumed the chair of SCO, Council of Head of Government, we have already proposed to hold the next meeting of this forum in Islamabad on 15th and 16th of October. We thank all those member states who have already confirmed these dates and we there for their participation. And I take this opportunity to request other member states to do the same at the earliest convenience. We are looking forward to hosting all honorable and respected SCO leaders in our capital, Islamabad. Excellencies, in addition to its own initiative announced during the last meeting of the heads of government, Pakistan in its capacity as its chair will endeavor to accommodate all forward-looking initiatives that promote development of SCO region. To this end, we look forward to the active and positive collaboration guidance of all the member states. I would like to commend the hard work and dedication of our national coordinators and, and experts in various formats who help in finalizing the documents and the decisions that will be adopted or signed today. To this end, I will acknowledge the efficient work done by the Secretariat under the able leadership of the Secretary General, Mr. Zhang Ming. To conclude, Mr. Chairman, I reaffirm Pakistan's commitment to working together to promote and strengthen SCO as an effective forum for regional development in line with the laudable values of the Shanghai spirit for achieving our common objectives of peace, prosperity, stability, and connectivity of the SEO region. I take this opportunity, Mr. Chairman, to extend my wholehearted thanks to you, the leadership of Kazakhstan, and its people for the very warm reception and very generous hospitality extended to me, my delegation and all of our colleagues. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman.